Jesus, so you you made it a great show too. This <laughs> the last show I wanted problems with. You made this a good show. Just I, I was I was I, I knew you would. I just was worried about myself. I mean, I'm, anyways, I mean, welcome, yeah, welcome back again for the third time. This is paranormal. <laughs> anyway, Joe was in the middle of tell us. Uh, but anyhow, real quick before we dive in, um, when a bigfoot walks, there's a thing called the um, I gotta read it here the metatarsal break. That's a big thing with Bigfoot cast is you'll see when a Bigfoot walks, it walks different than a human because the way that the ankle structure is different. You'll notice that the, the toes will dig in a little deeper and the palm of the foot digs in a little deeper because when they walk, they raise their ankle up before they actually step away. That's I called a metatarsal break. That's a big thing to figure out if it's a fake or if it's an unknown footprint. Isn't it funny, all the legitimate uh, cats you just see have that toad, mm -hmm. curled toe thing. I never even thought about that you brought it up today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you obviously did your research. <laughs> I mean, you just know so much more about this than I do. Mm -hmm. give, us a, give us Okay, give us one a, last thing before we die. Um, before the internet connection dies. There's this, uh, remember I told you earlier about the story about the dog man mm -hmm. coming up against the little girl's window. Well, there's other stories of the dogmen that actually shake the house, go up on the roof, pound on the roofs, try to do anything they can to get in the house. But yet, they could rip a door off the wall. No problem. They could just push the door in. Legend says they have to be invited into the house, just like the men in black and a lot of other things like that. You think about why. Do you think the dog man and the werewolf are the same thing? Yeah, Arizona I mean, do you? I think so. Yeah. See, you know what? Tramp knows a lot about dog men as well. Mm -hmm. It's funny you said I was watching a, a show and these people were in the house and they were scared to death and they could hear the dog man walking across the roof back and forth and it was scouring around the mm -hmm. house and it was trying to find find a way find in. a way in. But I would that would that would petrify me. I mean, I don't know about this, but it's always said that they can't come in unless they're invited in. Now, I was thinking about this, and without talking about our guardian angels, how they battle off the mm -hmm. evil forces or whatever, we all have free will. Okay? And maybe, now I don't, I'm not positive about this, just my thoughts, but maybe it's the fact that we have free will. If we open the door and let them in, our guardian angels are like, you're on your own. You know, they yeah, can't stop that's us. Sure, they, that's just something I was well, They can about. warn you, they can they can teach you, but they, they can't change what you're about to do. No. Um, I, you, have, you have any more stories? No, not I, really. I got no, a, I got nothing a, to do with Bigfoot. I got, but, a, I got a real short story to mm share. -hmm. My only experience, and it wasn't directly with Bigfoot or some type of creature. Um, I, I didn't think I told you this story. I hope I didn't tell that because I'm about to tell it again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen again. <laughs> in the the corn behind the, the old cabin um, years ago, to this day, my oldest son and my nephew Josh, who was, who lived with me for a few years while he, he was going to school and going through college, come back petrified. Um, they saw something that was two feet taller than the corn in July, mm. and, and that's going to stand about five feet tall. These boys in a two mile area. They could in one day, one one afternoon, they could bring you back fifty frogs. Yeah. They could bring you back four or five turtles and a handful of snakes. They knew this property better than most adults. Um, they played in every creek. Um, they they were in, in engulfed in the, the mud piles there. They saw something, mm -hmm. and to this day, I, I talked to Nick earlier. My oldest son said the show I was having on that we were do. I said, Nick, tell me about it. Well. I saw a really tall, hairy man, Dad, mm -hmm. um, and he was growling, and he could run like hell through the corn. I went out the next day, and there was a trail through the through the corn. Um, I have no explanation for it, mm -hmm. but you know, I know one thing: for the rest of the summer, those two boys never left the cabin. I couldn't, I couldn't lock them in the cabin. I there was no, I had to force them to come in and get something to eat. They wanted to be out, you know, trapping frogs and, and snakes and anything they could uh, if they weren't fishing. I couldn't throw them out of the cabin for the rest of the summer. When the sun was starting to go down, they were inside and they would not leave to the sun. They saw something, they don't know what it was, 
you know, that's that's in the Ottawa County. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we all know, that's filled with marshland and wildlife. And I mean, could it be? I don't know. But I'll add to that story, uh, and Becky can tell you uh, this is a true story. Uncle Jeff experienced the same thing. In the dead of winter a year or so ago, I went up there. Uh, say it was December or January, and about three o'clock in the morning, um, this is a small uh, four room cabin. Uh, a, a bang on the side of the cabin was so loud. It, it, I was I felt like a recliner. You know when you're up there by yourself. It's a man's job to sit and recline and watch TV. I fell asleep watching TV. It scared the hell out of me, and it, 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 it bounced me right out of my seat. Um, I grabbed a, a twenty-two. I, I went out on the porch. Um, I was I was scared. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's the middle of the night. Dark is dark, and there's no lights up there. Um, and I can remember. It's probably funny now. I said, uh, if I see one thing move, I'm pulling this trigger, mm -hmm. and you're just as dead as dead can be. And then I thought about it. I can't see anything. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm a quick thinker. I instantly regrouped and said, okay, well, I probably can't see you, but I have really good hearing. And if I hear one sound, I'm going to shoot right in that direction. Sure as shit, you're dead in heck. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it for a minute, kind of Native American. I thought about it. I thought about it for a second more. And I, I came back in the camp and locked the doors. Uh, and you got back, he's doing the thing. I told him this for very much, but scared. I was, I, I was, you know, I wasn't a, scared to death, but I was scared to death. Mm -hmm. uh, look at like I was. Yeah. I didn't leave the cab, and I locked the doors, and I waited for the sun to go. I didn't want to even go out to try to get to my car because I didn't know what was between me and my automobile. The very next year, or maybe it was even later on that summer, Jeff had uh, Uncle Jeff had come home in the morning with the same exact story that happened to me. This cabin sits in the middle of nowhere. Um, it, I could have been, could have been what my my son has seen with my nephews. I don't know. Um, so much so that I believe these things to be true. Is I set up some trap cameras up there, and I've let them run for a week or two weeks at a time when I'm not up there. I've yet to ever capture anything besides a deer or mm -hmm. you know uh, maybe a muskrat or some some groundhogs. But um, I firmly believe that it had to be something. Yeah. I mean, we weren't all mass. It wasn't mass hallucination. I don't think. And so. are they smart enough to realize that there is a camera there? Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Joe, and then we'll get off the air. We always want to. Are these things real in your opinion? I mean, come on, you're well-respected. Oh, man, you're the host of 222 Paranormal Podcast. I mean, do you really want to come out to the public and, and say, you know, Bigfoot is real? I mean, what is your you know, take on this? It's so bizarre because you want to say they're real because they've been seen for thousands of years all over the world, but I've never seen one. Do you think I, we will? Until I see one. Then I'll say it could be real. Do you think the evidence is there? That I mean, there's so much evidence proves. And I was a big skeptic when I first started. And like I said, show me the evidence. Don't show me a tree. Yeah, more evidence of that. Don't show me a tree with an arm stick. Now show me a clear shot. And I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of clear video. Um, I just some of the strangest things you want to do. Go up on YouTube, and there's sounds. Oh, I've heard some woods. of those calls. They're eerie. It's and the knocks. The knocks are pretty yeah. popular. Mm -hmm. They communicate that way, right? Yeah, they, they they say that they communicate with the knocks, but there's also um, audio of what sounds like a, two of them talking in a language. What does the knows. whoop mean? I've often heard the whoop, whoop, whoop. Or, I mean, <laughs> does anybody ever say what that means? Or No, I don't know. That's just, it's we just the, the knocks. And... Some of the audio that I've listened to, you hear them whooping off in the distance. So I don't know. You know, do you think, I mean, are they yelling at each other going, hey, Darby, hey, Darby. Do you think that some shows that we watch, I mean, I tend to gravitate towards the shows that I feel, you know, I, I guess are more real, more scientifically based. Um, but I, I, I find myself, you know, in the world of entertainment as well, sometimes on a Sunday, I'll, Sit down when it's you know when it's on and and back and say why are you watching these clowns? Mm -hmm. And I'll say you know because I'm a Bobo fan. It's entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Is it? It's is, entertainment. Gee, I love to be. I I think even people like them, you know, if they're out there enough, they could they could accidentally stumble into one. I mean, it could happen. I don't think that they're going to be the group that you know. If they come out and find one live on TV, do you think that they? Shows end. Do you think they help? Shows over. Do you think? Do you think they help the research? <laughs> Or do you think they hinder it? 
I do think they help it a lot because they get the awareness out. That's what I think mm -hmm. from an initial. So if you see something on TV, that's a lot of it is scripted. A lot of it, I mean, a lot of the TV shows. But if you see any shows with me or Harold on it, it's true. It's true. You've heard it here first. <laughs> there is a big point. <laughs> you know, I guess the biggest thing is I want to believe. I, you know, the, the last 10 years for me, they've gathered up. I mean, the whole, you know, it's gotten so much better. The research has gotten so much better. The scientists are, 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 are very well respected. Mm -hmm. If Bigfoot exists, I believe, and I hope it's one of my lifetime, they will capture and document. I think so. That, there's, that there is some type of a species, some bipedal ape type species that may exist amongst us. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible. Yeah. Uh, and I live in a world of possibilities. I mean, listen, 40 years ago, uh, when I first spoke with the paranormal, and first I can remember telling my friends, you know, talk to them, they, they, they hear us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and my friends would say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, but it's bigger than that. They can they can talk back to us. Mm -hmm. well, well, we open your mind to right. possibilities, and, and, come. and, and over the, to, the course of uh, time, lo and behold, equipment has now been being made mm -hmm. that that helps us capture these entities. So, I mean, if you want to see your closed mind, there is no Bigfoot, but there is no there's no truth to the afterlife. Listen, I, I'm skeptical as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it took me a lot of years; I had to prove it to myself. Uh, I'm a little bit leery of going out in the woods all by myself to prove that there's a Bigfoot because I'm kind of a scaredy cat. Uh, but you know, if, I, if my group would go with me, I'd, I'd give it a shot. Mm -hmm. um, the possibility of Bigfoot is, I guess, is what I like. Um, and I'm hoping that Josh Gates or any one of these, Jeff Melbourne, any one of these, these, these good scientists are going to run across something. There's another, and I want to give this guy's name because <laughs> I want you guys to look at it, and then I'll give the show to you to say goodbye. Um, Dr. Melba Ketchum, that's who I want to say. Okay. He, he is he is a, a, a doctor now, but I can't tell you where he's from, maybe Washington, right, Washington State, I don't know. Um, he's invited all these other scientists, everybody from the Bigfoot community. There's probably 40 or 50 very well-respected scientists that are you know out searching to, uh, for evidence to, mm -hmm. to, to prove or disprove this. He is doing all the DNA testing. Mm -hmm. He's he's opened it up uh, and welcomed everybody to bring whatever evidence you may have, uh, and he will test it for free. Um, he about two months ago tested some a hair sample that he got, and he has openly said it's from an unknown yeah. primate species. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot, we don't know uh, what it is. We don't know. It's it's yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. It's an unknown species of primate. It's yep. a primate here, and I think that that was set in by the Himalayas somewhere as well. So I mean, it would yet to be determined. Well, Joe, thanks, thanks a ton. Oh, yeah. you, you made a complete fool out of me. Uh, <laughs> you, you showed they have no, no knowledge. I have a lot of... Uh, a lot we, of just, we have a lot more knowledge than what we think. Once well, we start listen, talking, we always end up with... I, I love Bigfoot. I, hope, I love Bigfoot stories. I love everything Bigfoot. Um, but as you can see, I probably don't have a whole lot of knowledge. So, um, thanks for coming on. Oh yeah. Um, we're going to come back. Is listen before we go. We got to we got to say a couple of things. Um, you did your record. No, you had a birthday party today for your dad. Yeah. Can we say happy birthday to your dad? Oh yeah. You want to sing it or you're just going to say? No, I'll just say happy birthday, dad. Um, one thing that I did get him that I got it a couple months ago because I knew how much he loved. It. Um, he watches Finding Bigfoot all the time. I met up with Bobo. Something real squatchy about that, Joe. Yeah, I went up with Bo I met up with Bobo at one of the shows and I had him sign a hat. It says keep on squatching. Yeah. And Bobo signed it for him. So That's it was really an early cool. present. That is really cool. <laughs> you uh your show's coming on. What's tomorrow's show up about? And tell everyone how to get there. Oh yeah, that's right. What do we have? Yeah, I'm today. sorry. I, I worked yesterday. I keep thinking this. I, I'm lost. It what was the about? call in show. We had some good call ins. And people asking questions on our hotline, and don't ask me what the number you is. Devin, you don't Devin, remember it. You had Devin on, right? Yeah, you know, we recorded Devin Beach yesterday, and that show will be out next weekend. Okay. But who, this, today's name? show was all about questions. We had three great questions that somebody called in, and we answered the questions. And we actually mentioned you on one of the questions. What was the question? Do you? Why is, do we? Is Bigfoot real? Why do we? Invest I don't know. Carl would ask. The question was, why do we investigate in the dark? Well, I think it's because of the 
the, the contamination levels. Well, there's many reasons. Many reasons. But, but I think that's one of the big ones for me. And they can't see me run out of the building. I was going to say, and plus it's scary. Yeah. And I like everything scary. If you're doing your investigation and you hear screaming of a little girl, it's not. It's just me running out of the building. So, what, so <laughs> real quickly, what else is going on? What, what's two, two, two? Our, you said you're you're going on a trip somewhere. Too. We going are going. Our months are filling up. We're going to a bunch of conventions. We're going to a bunch of paranormal, you know, convention type stuff. Um, we just got invited to go to the Minerva Monster Day. That Tell is us about the, it. That is in Minerva, Ohio. I don't know what the monster is they saw, but it's all cryptid. It's all Bigfoot and cryptid stuff. The Minerva Monster Day is at the Minerva High, um, Minerva High School, and I believe the date is June nineteenth. But don't quote me on that. Because it's way away. Just watch our page. And Are you and Jen both going? Yeah, we got. What does what does Jen, booth there? What does Jen think about all this? She loves it. I mean, the whole crypto thing is. Oh called, yeah. Which does she, she believe loves in Bigfoot? Big yeah. She yeah, she believes in Bigfoot. Does yeah. she believe in Dogman? Yeah. We're all we're super excited about that show. I mean, we love all the shows that we go to, but that one there is going to be fun because it's at the high school. It's outside, so we're going to put up our tent and everything. And, that sounds awesome. And it's free. I, I want to come down. I want also want to go on a Bigfoot excursion. Like well, we're going to go down. I think Becky's getting in some cabin late April. Um, I, I want, I'm going to say, yeah, you know, Chris Tillman, our friend from mm -hmm. Long Fleet, does these documentaries, and I've been telling Chris for a year or two. I, I want to do some of the same things and talk about some of our upcoming stories in the book. We're going to go down. We're going to hope to do the Mothman again. Um, do some video footage up there. And hopefully, I can get back in the bunkers. We're going to stop by the Haydenville Tunnel, the, the Moonville Tunnel. The cabin up in Gloucester, so we got a we got a road trip that's going to be three days long and like twenty places to visit. Hey, let's get a camper and just go. You know, but I want to come back down there because most of these areas are right in where the grass has been spotted. So I want to go back and make an exclusive trip to where because Becky loves to camp. Maybe we can camp in the the, the state park, Burr State Park uh, area somewhere. And, you know, who knows? Maybe we can have a little campfire and invite him in. And there you go. Maybe we'll see. I don't know. So, anyways. Um, and we're going to be back on next weekend, next Sunday again for the other ghost talk. Then the following Sunday, I think we're taking off because of the Super Bowl. Okay. Um, so we'll be off the second Sunday. Listen, one more thing before uh, I want to thank Joe for being on uh, tonight. He was a great guest, full of knowledge. He made he made my job easy. <laughs> so if I did look you know, the least bit silly it, with no knowledge, it's because I did it to myself. Um, schools back in, guys. Um, Owensworks.com. Um, ghost Study 101 is going to start up again. Um, a week from Thursday, um, I talked to Jamie over at the college Friday briefly for a moment. She said the class is starting to fill up. It looks like it's going to be a definite goal, so we're definitely going to be back in, followed by Ghost Hunting in, in April, 102 in April. But I, I, if you're interested in this, that kid said something about maybe later on this week, we may give a, a free student spot away. Oh. Uh, Becky usually puts something you feel like and share mm -hmm. or something like that. And maybe somebody, if somebody, I, I guess the bottom line is, if you want to attend the Ghost Hunting 101 and you're very serious about it, it's a fun class. Um, you, you get to come into three three classrooms and you know learn a little bit about equipment, a little bit about do's and don'ts. Um, you follow up with a field trip. If this interests you and it's something that you really want to do, and you and I think it's eighty nine dollars for these classes, one of charges. If if you can't afford the class, you know, message us and let us let us know what you want and maybe we can help you out a little bit or something. I don't want you to miss the Ghost Hunting 101 class. It was something that you really want to do, and you're really serious about it. Uh, but the finances aren't ready. Listen, we all get a little trouble. So if there's something we can do to maybe help you out, get a hold of messages, and, and get a hold of Becky and let her know. So, Joe, once again, thanks for, oh, yeah. for joining the show. We'll see everybody back here next week. Uh, wait, we got one more thing to sign up with. Tramp just says, Joe, you be careful going home because it's really foggy outside. The fog. The fog, fog. Bigfoot in the fog um, is scary. On a later show, we'll talk about electric fog. I've heard of that as well. Oh, yeah. There's so many things paranormal <laughs> in the world. I live my, I live my whole life but I want paranormal glasses on. One thing I want to say is if you're down in the southern Ohio in the Black Swamp area, be, be, be careful. In the Black Swamp, you never know what you're going to see. It may be Bigfoot or it just might be. Arizona Tramp. Hey, speaking of that, wait a minute. <laughs> Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at 10 p.m., is Tramp still under? 
I think I'm on. I think I'm on Black Swamp Radio this coming Wednesday, Joe. Oh. At ten o'clock. I think it's this Wednesday. I think we're going to talk about ghost hunting versus paranormal investigating, which there's some differences. Mm-hmm. Um, some, I think some ghost hunting do's and don'ts. Unless Drake was throwing me off the show, guys. I get yeah. Tramp with Saint Amon. Hey, thanks, Tramp, for having me on your show. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we'll talk about anything you want. So I think about with Chris Tillman. Okay. I, I hate to say Chris Tillman's going to be on as well. So it'd be a great opportunity. Tramp and Chris and I can spend a, an hour together. It'd be awesome. Yeah. So all right, guys. Till next week. Thanks, Joe, for coming on. Stay safe. Happy holidays.